If you're riding a Twin Cam 88 and you're not really interested in going all out with a 95 inch kit or even doing a big bore kit on it, maybe you're not even that far up in the miles yet, but you really wanna do something more beyond the stage one with your exhaust and air cleaner and your jet kit or your tuner, depending on whether you're carbureted or fuel injected, a camshaft swap may be just what you're looking for. By putting a cam in your 88, you're gonna be able to target your power to the areas that you ride in most. So for today's video, I've taken a look at camshafts for the Twin Cam 88, and I selected some camshafts that I personally would be most interested in putting in an 88. Now the 88 is not a huge horsepower producer, but it does produce decent torque. And with the right camshaft, we can really build on that so now while the 88 inch displacement, it isn't gonna blow the roof off with a camshaft swap like we saw on the Twin Cam 103 and on the 96, but it is gonna be a decent improvement over what the stock bike's making. So before we get into today's list, don't forget to give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. So the first cam I wanna take a look at today is the Fueling 525. This cam also works in the 96 and the 103, but it's the same deal with the 88. This cam bolts right in, uses all your stock valve train components. You don't have to change your springs out. It offers a very strong, low to mid-range power. This cam produces more torque than it really does horsepower, but I really like it because of the bolt-in design, and the cam actually comes on about 1750 RPM. And it pulls pretty strong, up to about 5,000 or so before it starts to taper off. But anyhow, let's go look at the Fueling 525. The Fueling 525 is a really nice cam for your Twin Cam 88. Your power comes on starting at, looks like right about 2000 RPM. And at 2000 RPM, the horsepower climbs and it doesn't let up until we hit about 5500 RPM. And at about 5500 RPM, that's a lot higher than a lot of guys are gonna rev their bikes. So looking down here, where you're probably gonna start shifting and what you would consider revving it out, you're making about 80 horsepower, which not bad at all for this cam. And as far as the torque, the torque comes on, we take a little dip, but at the same time, our horsepower is still climbing. Now, as the torque climbs, you're gonna reach your peak torque just over about 4,300 RPM, and then we might, we're gonna peak out just under 4,500, and then the torque's gonna drop off. But at the same time, you're still pulling good horsepower. That 525 is a nice cam. It's not a major horsepower producer whatsoever. I mean, 80 horsepower, yeah, that's a pretty good gain over the stock 88. The torque gain's pretty massive on it though, but I do like the curve on that cam. I mean, it does take a little dip in torque, but at the same time, you're still building horsepower. So honestly, you're probably not even gonna feel that. So the next cam I wanted to take a look at today is from SNS. SNS is known for high quality products and arguably they probably know more about Harley Davidson twin cams than Harley Davidson does themselves. A very popular SNS cam on the 96 and the 103 is the 550 and the 551 cams. Now you can use those cams in a twin cam 88, but you have to change your valve springs out. And the whole purpose of this video is to give you bolt-in camshafts that are gonna produce major power over stock. So what SNS has done is they've taken the best parts of their most popular 550 and 551 cam and they created the 509. The 509 bolts right into your twin cam 88 without having to change the valve springs. This is an excellent street cam because the power is centered from idle to about 4,500 RPM. And one of the best parts about this cam too is that it works with your stock compression. And on twin cam 88s, well any twin cam for that matter, the compression's pretty low. So the amount of power that this cam can produce, even with that lower compression ratio, I think it's pretty impressive. I mean, SNS, they've been around for a long time, and to me, they're kind of the authority on performance parts when it comes to Harley Davidson. So let's go check out that SNS 509. So looking at the dyno for the SNS 509 cam, our stock horsepower had a max of 60.82, and our max torque at about 70 foot pounds of torque at about 3,500 RPM. So nothing too impressive here, but now, when we add the SNS 509 cam, our max power jumps up to 76 horsepower and our max torque of 94 foot pounds. And if you look at this compared to your stock cam, this thing gains all throughout the RPM range, even down low. 
we're not losing any to stock. We're not losing horsepower. We're not losing torque to stock all the way through the RPM range. Now going from 60 horsepower to 76 and max torque from 70 to 94, that's a hell of a game, especially on an 88. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the stock horsepower is not that impressive, nor is the torque on the stock 88. And it wasn't gonna blow the roof off even with the max power of these cams. So the S&S 509, it's not a whole lot different than the fueling 525. Now, what I do like about the 509 from S&S versus fueling's 525, I like the power delivery better. I like how we don't get a, a little dip in the torque there while the horsepower is climbing. I like how everything climbs together and it's a lot smoother across the board than it was with the fueling 525. Now gaining 16 horsepower over stock and what, 24 foot pounds of torque? That's pretty impressive for doing nothing more to an 88 other than changing the camshaft. Now, of course, you're gonna wanna have that stage one on there, have a good air cleaner, have a good exhaust system, and have a good tune, whether it be through a jet kit or through a EFI tuner if you're fuel injected. So I wanted to go ahead and throw a Screamin' Eagle cam in here. And a good Screamin' Eagle cam for the Twin Cam 88 is the Screamin' Eagle 203 cam. Now, while Screamin' Eagle from Harley-Davidson doesn't really produce the horsepower and torque that a lot of these aftermarket cams are gonna give you, I like to go ahead and throw these in there because there are some people out there that they like to run Harley-Davidson parts, and I get that. You know, you buy a Harley-Davidson, you wanna stick with the Harley-Davidson parts. So I figured we'd put the Screamin' Eagle 203 in here. Now, the Screamin' Eagle 203 is really good low to mid-range torque cam. It doesn't produce quite as much as these aftermarket cams, but it is a huge improvement over the stock horsepower and torque. So let's go ahead and take a look at that Screaming Eagle 203 and kind of see how it compares to the first two aftermarket cams that we've looked at today. So here we have the Screaming Eagle 203. They're basically showing us the stock horsepower for the 88, just under 60 and about 70 foot pounds of torque. That's about what we saw in the other dyno graph with this one being from Harley Davidson. Now the Screaming Eagle 203 Comes on nice, don't get me wrong, it does gain over the stock horsepower, but we're only getting about uh, 75 horse, which, you know, not terribly bad, but not terribly impressive either compared to some of our other cams. Now, torque on the other hand, pretty good, pretty good. We're coming in about under 90 foot-pounds of torque, and that's at 3,500 RPMs, where it falls flat to 4,000 and then tapers off. Okay, Screaming Eagle 203. It's a lot milder cam than the Fueling 525 and the S&S 509. Now, even for being a milder cam, we get a nice gain over stock. Horsepower going from slightly below 60 to just mildly over 72. It does produce nice torque. I mean, close to 90 foot-pounds of torque. That's not bad for a Harley-Davidson cam. But for me, if I'm gonna tear a bike down and do all that, Personally, I think I would go ahead and go with the aftermarket cam. So the next cam on my list today is the Rocket Cam. Yes, the Rocket Cam. It is the Rocket 514. This is a very nice, high torque, direct bolt-in cam. Very easy on the valve train. So it's not gonna destroy your valve springs. It's not gonna crater your lifters. This is a great cam for high torque and some decent horsepower while you're at it. This cam is gonna accept your stock valve springs. No change needed there and it works best from 1500 to about roughly 5,000 RPM. So we're getting a really good range there from the low, and we're not going too crazy revving the bike out on top. So what this tells me, with this cam being good up to 5,000 RPM, I'm not gonna have to rev the crap out of this bike to get my max horsepower and torque out of it. So let's go take a look at this Rocket Cam and see what it's gonna offer us with a cam swap on just a stock 88. Well, I say stock, stage one. The Rocket Cam. This is quite an impressive little cam here. Comes on about 2,000 RPM, and the power pulls all the way up, maxes out at 83 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. Now, this is a very high torque cam. So the torque comes on a little later, but when it comes on, it really starts to climb as you're getting up through the RPM range. Now, the peak torque hits at about, oh, 3,700 RPMs, and we have about 92 foot-pounds of torque. So what this cam really doesn't make in horsepower it does make up in the amount of torque you get. And the torque peaks out pretty early compared to some of the other cams we've looked at. So the Rocket Cam is not a bad cam at all. It's got a very nice torque and power curve to it. And probably what you're noticing now is a theme with the 88. The 88 really doesn't produce a whole lot of horsepower, but 
it could definitely get you some pretty decent torque numbers, you know, somewhere into the high 80s, low 90s. And Rocket Cam does that very well. But the one thing you really want to pay attention to on these cams is look at these dyno graphs and pay attention to the RPMs that you ride in. Really pay attention to that RPM range. This is going to help you select the perfect cam for your motorcycle. So by comparing the RPM range that you ride your bike in, compare this to these dyno graphs. This will give you an idea of exactly the cam that you're going to need. If you watch the videos about cam swaps on the 96 and the 103 inch twin cam, you probably noticed that we featured wood cams quite a bit on there. And there's a reason for that. The wood cam is a very strong performer and they do make a cam for the 88. So it's no different on the 88. For the 88, wood offers the TW6. The TW6 is another direct bolt-in cam and the power comes on right off idle through 5,500 RPM. Now I could talk all day about wood cams and their performance and how much I like them, but I like to show you guys the dyno graphs and let you make your own decisions from there. So on today's dyno graphs for the wood cam, we're actually gonna show a carbureted 88 and what you can do with a fuel injected 88. So let's go check it out. Now this wood night prowler TW6 cam is quite impressive. The power comes on just over 1500 RPM. This is right off idle, horsepower and torque both. The horsepower is going to run all the way up to a max of 92 horsepower. And this is right just under 5000 RPM. That's pretty impressive for a peak horsepower number being that low, especially on an 88. Now our max torque is going to come in at 97 foot pounds of torque. And this is right between 3500 and 4000 RPM. This is kind of the sweet spot to me on a big twin. I told you guys, these Night Prowler cams are pretty impressive from wood. Now this graph is on a carbureted bike, so let's take a look at a couple graphs from a fuel injected bike and kind of get a feel for what this can do in a fuel injected motorcycle. Now this is the same TW6 cam in a fuel injected motorcycle. Now our max horsepower is going to peak out up here a little bit higher, looks like at about 5500 RPM, we're going to get 79 horsepower, and our max torque is going to come in at 89.9. Roughly the same area as well, between 3,500 and 4,000 RPM. So a little lighter than that carbureted bike we saw. But let's take a look at another FI bike and see what those numbers look like. Now this is another fuel injected 88, just with slip-ons and a super tuner and the wood TW6 cam. Now I like these numbers a little bit better. It's coming on a little later, closer to 3,000 RPM. This cam's coming on a little bit later, but we're getting 90.36 horsepower. Looks like, oh, we'll say a little over 5,500 RPM up here. But the max torque, the max torque is peaking out between 3,500 and 4,000 RPM at 100.95 foot-pounds. So that just goes to show you guys, these little fuel-injected 88s can really produce some power if they're tuned right. So how about that wood cam? Not a whole lot different than the horsepower and torque from the other bikes, but I really like the power curve on the wood cam. Now don't count out your carbureted motorcycles as you can see. Carbureted bikes can still produce some power. Honestly, I figured the fuel injected bike would have a major advantage over the carbureted ones, but as we can see, that's really not so. So with 88 inch displacement, whichever cam you choose, your horsepower is gonna remain kind of in the low to mid 80s, and your torque's gonna be anywhere from the high 80s to roughly about the mid 90s. And that's the thing I like about the wood cam, is that the wood cam really puts that torque up there, like 94 foot-pounds, which that's pretty dang good for just keeping that 88-inch displacement. So if you guys are riding an 88 and you're really looking for a little more power over the Stage 1, a camshaft is a great way to go, and it's very cost-effective when compared to going with a 95-inch, getting into those big bore kits. So which cam was your favorite? Would you guys go with the fueling? Would you go with the s, &S? Would you go with the rocket cam? Or would you go with that wood TW6? I mean, they're all good cams. They all pretty much produce roughly about the same amount of power. They just deliver it a little differently. So just be sure to pay attention to the RPM range you're riding in and compare it to the dyno graphs. And if you guys know of any other camshafts out there that you like, that you run in your 88 or that you would prefer, let me know in the comments down below. That's all I've got for you this week. I hope that gave you an idea of what a Twin Cam 88 can do just with a camshaft swap. So just remember, compare those RPM ranges before you make a decision and throw down your hard-earned money on one. 
Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. You guys bundle up out there. It's starting to get cold. Stay warm. Enjoy the ride. Dodge the cars. Be safe. And I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching.